Welcome back, guys. Uh, today I thought I'd take another look at Robo Linux. I reviewed it uh, several months ago, and I liked the distribution, but I didn't like the fact that it was they were charging for the installer. Uh, the The installer is now free. Uh, they do uh, provide a uh, mechanism for you to do boot Windows as long as your Windows is booting from a virtual machine. Um, I haven't changed much on this install. Uh, I had a little difficulty um, installing from a USB. It would not, the, the USB would not burn properly uh, using the DD command. So I ended up having to use Rufus on Windows to uh, create the, the USB. Once I did that, it, it booted up fine. And the installation is a typical Debian install. So if you're com comfortable with installing Debian, you'll have no trouble with Robo Linux. Now, Robo Linux did not uh, configure my Broadcom Wi-Fi out of the box. So I am connected uh, wired through an Ethernet cable. Um, it's interesting because if you look at the, uh, this is the XFCE version, by the way. If you look at the menu, a couple of uh, unique situations. The drivers are provided, um, and I've got mixed feelings about this. The reason being is you see the printer driver for my uh, Wi-Fi, MFC J870DW. Um, I clicked on that and it did not install properly uh, so I ended up having to install it manually in order to get it to work so that's one um, issue that I had um, it does list drivers from many other brother printers uh, there's a there's a, a link for a custom built printer driver a custom built video driver and a custom built Wi-Fi driver now it also has uh, various AMD and NVIDIA options so if you have an AMD um, video card this might work for you or it might not I have not installed my um, NVIDIA card yet uh, I think I'm gonna try to use this now I have an NVIDIA GeForce 760, which would be this particular menu item. Um, if you, I'm assuming you have to remove the Nouveau driver. So it looks like a multi-step process. I'm not sure whether this makes it easier or more difficult. Um, I guess I'd have to go through the process. Now I do have a um, another Wi-Fi uh, dongle that I use occasionally and I haven't plugged that in yet. I'm going to plug it in right now and we will see. This is it right here. This is a Wi-Fi USB dongle. I'm going to plug it in to see if it configures. And there should be a little window that pops up telling me I have Wi-Fi available. <clears throat> so far, I don't see that. Uh, yes, there it is. You see, now I have Wi-Fi available. So it did recognize my USB dongle. And let's see if I can connect to that. and it should connect because this dongle is pretty generic uh, and it's picked up usually by most and it did so I am now connected via Wi-Fi now that only leaves my Broadcom and my Nvidia card to install now if I if I go back to drivers and if I remember correctly, yes. You see where it says Broadcom 4321 to 43228? Well, I happen to have a 4360, which 
is listed here 4311 to 4360 so I'm gonna click on that enter my password and let's see this driver supports the following and 4360 is there if your card is not listed please abort by typing control C in this terminal then remove the driver script installer file okay so it's going ahead and it's installing I'm going to Okay, I'm going to continue the install and it should go through the process. Now I'm going to uh, pause the video. I'll be right back with you. Okay, welcome back guys. <clears throat> now um, the Broadcom driver, the system rebooted and then once I rebooted um, it came back up the Broadcom driver was configured properly so <clears throat> that menu item worked properly and that's a big help now let's take a look at NVIDIA okay so I used the BCM 4360 driver and now I'm going to try right here the GeForce 6 and 7 So now it is going through, uh, let's see, you should install a proprietary NVIDIA driver. They are available in the driver's menu. Okay, so it's just making sure that you have the driver that you selected. So now it's waiting, and if you don't type Control-C to abort, then it goes on with the installation of the driver. <clears throat> and it should at the end of this install it will complain that you don't have the XORG file please ignore the warning as NVIDIA XORG is being installed do you want to continue yes so it tells you to ignore the warning at the end of the install <coughs> and hopefully it'll go through and take care of all of the necessary um, extra work so that when I reboot so it says there's a conflicting nouveau kernel module easiest way is to reboot so it's it, it evidently it's going to uh, remove the nouveau kernel module automatically so it's telling me to ignore this particular uh, message now I'm gonna pause the video guys because this thing once I click OK on the printer driver the brother printer driver and on the Broadcom it rebooted without warning uh, which messes up the video so I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna finish the install and reboot and hopefully everything's fine I'll be right back with you guys okay guys I'm back uh, it did finish the installation and it did reboot <clears throat> it doesn't give you the option not to reboot so I would um, I would recommend that when you use the drivers from the menu that Robo Linux um, allow the user to reboot or not okay so if I go into let's see where Nvidia the Nvidia settings there it is so now because this is based on Debbie and Jesse it only gave me the 304 driver not the latest um, with testing you get the 352 driver I believe the latest driver is a 364. This is a 304. It's a relatively old driver, but that's typical of Debian. Very conservative, Deb especially Debian Jesse, which is 
uh, based on stability. But on the plus side, uh, Robo Linux installed the driver correctly. So that's two out of three. The printer did not go as planned, but I was able to install it manually. And I'll show you that. So if I go to print settings, you will see there's my uh, printer. I installed that manually. It's working fine. Now, the settings uh, NVIDIA worked fine, 304. Broadcom worked fine, and my dongle worked fine. So uh, I would say that Robo Linux gets two thumbs up on the driver easy driver configuration. The drivers are listed in a menu and it does make it a lot easier. Okay, so let's go back to system. Firewall, GDebi, Gparted, all installed out of the box which is good. Oracle VirtualBox, Package Updater, I already ran the update so I'm fine there. Uh, I installed GUVC View because AM was already installed. Comes with a lot of software out of the box and the option to install more using the installers category. So I don't see uh, any issues uh, other than the printer driver and that's to be expected. Uh, even now within Linux drivers are uh, drivers can be a bit finicky so everything looks good I mean this is a, a Debian install I'm not sure there is no games category so no steam installed but in the installers I believe it does give you the option to install steam yes yeah, steams game installer uh, it does not give you the option for play on Linux. So if I click on Steam Game Installer, it should go ahead and install Steam. Now I'm not sure if I'll be able to. I, I'm not sure if if I'll be able to uh, get Battle Networking, but what I'm going to do, and it basically it's. Uh, it's bringing me to the Robo Linux website asking me to install um, the installer upgrade. So I think I'm going to pass on that. Apps installer upgrade is 9.95. Oh, that's not good. So um, I don't know why they're wanting to charge you for the to use that installer category. So it appears that if you click on one of these, it will bring you to their website asking you to pay for the installer upgrade, which then makes those links functional so that you can install any of the programs listed in the installer category which is not a not I mean for me it's not a good thing uh, because if I want to install one of those I'm I if I want to install Steam it's just a matter of a simple command and I don't need to pay nine uh, ninety five for that so now steam is installed so I don't know what the um, attraction would be to pay ten dollars to be able to install those apps. Uh, that's not a good thing in my opinion.
because it's an easy Pinta installer, Plex. All of these applications are easily installed at the command line or using uh, Synaptic. So I'm not sure what the attraction would be, but it's of no use to me. Uh, and it's just taking up space on my menu. So what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to make sure Steam and uh, Play on Linux and Battle Networks. I'll be right back with you. Okay, uh, I'm back, guys. Uh, uh, Steam did, did install and function properly. No issues at all. Um, Play on Linux, as is the case with many... Debian installs, play on Linux, at least with Battle.net, it would not install. So um, so all in all, I'd have to say that Robo Linux gets a uh, thumbs up for the installation uh, and most of the functionality. Uh, I don't like the fact that when you click on one of these installers, applications that it takes you to the website and asks you to pay nine dollars and ninety five cents to be able to install these apps when you can install them from the command line for free uh, so that I do not like but the drivers for the most part worked fine except for the printer uh, and so it's got a good uh, you know selection of software uh, that's the only caveat. I don't like the fact that they're asking you to pay them almost ten dollars uh, to do something that you can do in a f in a f in less than a minute from the command line. So that is it for Robo Linux, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care.